Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about how you can predict failure of thermoplastics under monotonic loading. So predicting failure of the thermoplastic material can be quite hard. And to start today, I will talk about a very specific case where we have some type of thermoplastic and we're just increasing the load more and more. It doesn't have to be uniaxial, but it's just an increasing load with no unloading, so no fatigue basically. How can you predict failure under those conditions? And um, one way to do that is to go back and think about what people have done in the automotive industry, particularly for metals. And what, what's pretty common in that strategy is to use a failure condition that's based on critical strain. So a strain-based condition, but then to make it work, you add a dependence on stress triaxiality. So what is the stress triaxiality? Well, stress triaxiality is basically just the ratio of the mean stress divided by the Mises stress. So it's a scalar number, and in uniaxial loading, you can see that the mean stress is a third of the, the applied stress, and the Mises stress is the applied stress, so stress triaxiality in uniaxial loading is about 0 0.3 or 0 0.33. In shear, uh, the stress triaxiality, there is no mean stress at small strain, so therefore there is zero stress triaxiality. In biaxial loading, it's about 0 0.66. If you have a notch specimen, 0 0.66, something like that. So that's a good way to quantify the nature of the stress field. And that's what's often used in the automotive industry. So what they do in that case is that you have a failure strain and that you make that failure strain depend on the stress triaxiality in some way. And here's a graph that I uh, grabbed from, uh, from the paper by Du Bois and, uh, and co-workers showing that the critical strain, this is for metal, of course, not for a polymer. And uh, this can actually be used also for polymers. And that's used relatively commonly in the automotive industry for that condition. I'm gonna show you a little bit about how that works today for thermoplastics. So the first thing I wanna point out though, and people get a little bit tripped up on this, is that the stress triaxiality in shear at small strain is indeed zero points, uh, close to zero. I see that uh, the pressure is very small, but if you do finite shear of a, a polymer component, you start to develop a uniaxial stress, and that is gonna make the stress triaxiality in simple shear depend on the amount of shear strain. And it will go from zero up to a value that approaches uniaxial loading at very, very large shear strength. What material models have this capability to predict failure using a strain that depends on the stress triaxiality? Um, there are some examples here that I found. Uh, Johnson Cook in Ansys Explicit. Gizmo is perhaps the most commonly one. It's available in LS Dyna. But also, yeah, I want to point out that if you haven't noticed this, the Polyuma, the TNV model, which is usually the most accurate stress strain predictive model for thermoplastics and other polymers, also understands and can handle stress triaxiality and failure prediction. So that's something that I really think is useful if you want to predict failure or safety factors of thermoplastic materials. So I have an example to illustrate this. My example is based on ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. Polyethylene with very long molecules is used in orthopedic implants and, and many other things. I tested this material a number of years ago uh, in monotonic tension, cyclic tension, and in comp uh, compression. And so I have data for this ultra high molecular weight polyethylene all the way up to failure. I calibrated the material model to this data and a, a model that can predict the response very well. And then I simulated an additional type of experiment that I performed. I performed this punch experiment. So this is a, a disc of this polyethylene that I punched with a spherical uh, metal punch. As you can see here, it's a final element simulation of the test. The nice feature of this experiment is that it's close to biaxial test and it's relatively easy to perform. So I have data uh, for when this polyethylene fails in biaxial loading. And I was able to simulate that and come up with a failure stress and strain in biaxial loading too from these experiments. So here are some of your screenshots uh, of the simulations of this biaxial test. This is a punch test, but I calculated the triaxiality constant. I get 0 0.66 approximately, indicating that indeed it's close to a biaxial test. So here are the results. Very interesting and perhaps uh, surprising uh, 
to you. So if you look at a Mises true stress as a failure condition in uniaxial loading, this polyethylene that I'm talking about fails at 160 megapascals, but in the punch test, the Mises stress at the onset of failure is way larger, suggesting that you should not use Mises stress as a way to characterize failure of this type of polyethylene. And that's really important. Mo many people say, well, Mises stress may be a good idea if the material is ductile and it's a thermoplastic. Here's an example. Not so good. It doesn't work. Similarly, max principle true stress actually doesn't really change from the Mises stress under these loading conditions that I talk about. Still not a good idea. The, the max principle true strain is here. So they a little bit closer together, but it's still a relatively large error in percent between these. So this brings up the idea of tri triaxiality. So my recommended approach here is to use a, <clears throat> a, a strain-based failure condition, but have the strain value, the critical strain value, depend on the stress triaxiality. So yes, you do need to measure these critical strain values uh, for different triaxialities, but if you do that, you can then predict the failure under those conditions and other conditions too. And you can plot, if you use the polyuma TMV model as listed here, you can plot safety factors on things like that. So yes, if you are predicting the ductile behavior of polymers under monoton monotonic loading, using a strain-based condition with the critical strain depending on stress triaxiality is really powerful and it allows you to predict the response very well all the way up to failure. And that is probably the best approach that I would recommend today. Um, if you have any questions, uh, ask them below.